Um, okay, so we want, I gave you guys this worksheet to fill in, and I want you to do that. I just want, in case you're stuck, to give you um, a little um, bit of help. So we're looking at this function, f of x equals 3 to the x power, right? And I, I just want to get a sense of this before I introduce um, this to you guys. So when I, I want you to fill in this chart, like let's look at this negative fifth, 5 is x. So I want to put negative 5 in for x, right? So there's 3 to the negative fifth power. The negative there I'm going to treat just as I have all semester. And this is 3 to the fifth power is 243. Okay, so that's what I'm looking at here for rational. And then if you actually do that division on your calculator, you should get 0 0.00412. Okay, so you fill in the rest of this chart as well. I'll fill it in and, and we'll come back together and then um, talk about it and, and draw a graph together. Okay, I assume that you have filled in these two pages that I gave you. Um, and if not, I, I posted my filled in pages on the website so you can go back and see. But I want to then use this information to graph. So let me switch over um, to graph some of these things. Here we go. So we're talking about exponential functions and the graphs of these functions. So I want to put some of this information on the graph. And let's just make sure that we know what we're talking about. It's important this part that I wrote at the very top of these um, kind of worksheet type things. We're talking about functions f of x is equal to b to the x. b is the base of this function. And in this case b is greater than 1. So the specific example that I'm looking at is f of x is equal to 3 to the x power. Okay? Now, there are some specific um, points that occur, and you can go through and plot all of these points on your graph, right? But three points that routinely occur on these graphs, on every one of these graphs, at the point zero, 01, when I plug 0 in, any positive number to the 0 power is 1. I get the point when I plug 1 in, I get b, and when I plug negative 1, I get 1 over b, okay? In this case, these points are the point 0, 1, 1, 3, that should show up on your chart, and negative 1, 1 over 3, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and put those on the graph. So 0, 1, right here. 1 and 3 is my output, and negative 1 right here. And the rest you should have seen, like, then it goes to 2, 9, right? Way, way up here, like this. So you get this picture of exponential growth. And then right here. This function has a horizontal asymptote. of y equal to 0. It won't cross that line. And we looked at that in this question and in, in this part of the chart where, I, where I'm looking at what happens when x gets really small. So you guys remember like there is this part of the chart where x is and I have negative 25, negative 50, and negative 100. And you get these values that are really, really small, like 1 times 10 to the minus 12th power, right? So really, really small values out of this, but still positive numbers. So this 1 times 10 to the negative 12th is a number 1 with like 11 zeros in front of it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 1. Like that's the... That's the number that we're talking about. So it's still this positive number. It's not actually zero, but it's really, really small. And that's what happens as I go out in this direction to the left, right? And when I go to the right, that was that other chart where x was positive 50. 
And as I go to the right, those numbers just get huge. Okay? Okay, here's my y-intercept, 0, 1. This is the y-intercept. There's no x-intercept. Okay? Okay, so I want to just make some notes about this function. Um, yeah, let's maybe draw the other function as well, and then we'll we'll make some notes about the these properties. Okay. Okay. So you had and you should have drawn another graph for me, for one third to the x power, right? Okay. So let's look at that. Um, one third to the x power, and you should have seen a lot of similarity in this, or kind of maybe reversal. So again, these are, we're going to look at f of x is equal to b to the x. Now when 0 is less than x is uh, less than b, I want to make a restriction on what this base of my number can be. It's less than 1, okay? And so here in this particular example that we're looking at, we have one third to the x. And I just want to make sure this is three to the minus x, right? Like when we're thinking of this, sometimes we see these bases as with negative exponents, okay? Okay, and the three points that you see on here and that we usually use to graph are these points again, zero, one, again, negative 1, 1 over b, but that's going to be a bigger number because b is a fraction, and 1 and the number b. So in this case I got 0, 1, negative 1, and 1 over 1 third is the number 3, and 1 and 1 third, right? So when I put those numbers on this graph, I get kind of a reversal. And you should have seen kind of the same like this. Okay? I still get a horizontal asymptote here. There's no vertical asymptote in these graphs. Horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Here's my y-intercept. 0, 1 is the y-intercept. Okay? But as I go out to um, to the right, this graph is is getting closer and closer to zero. Now I just I'll um, also maybe draw your attention here. This graph is a decreasing function, and I just want you to see that um, visually right now. Like this graph goes down and keeps decreasing as I get bigger. So this one is decreasing. on minus infinity to infinity, right? And then, but this other one was increasing. Do you see this? This first one we did, increasing on minus infinity to infinity. And so um, this is what this graph, when b is greater than 1, my base is greater than 1, I get a growth called exponential growth. Okay, um, and when b is between 0 and 1, this is called exponential decay. All right, let's, I want to make these properties of these functions um, and write down some of this stuff. So again, let's look here. If f of x is equal to b to the x, B has to be bigger than 0 and B can't be 1, okay? Um, and here are some properties for this function, these exponential functions, okay? One, it's defined on the entirety of the real line, minus infinity to infinity. Although the range of outputs for these functions just goes from 0 to infinity. All of them have positive outputs. There's no negative outputs here. 
right? It's a continuous function. Okay, two, it has a horizontal asymptote. at y equal to zero. Three y-intercepts is the point zero one and there's no x-intercept. It never crosses the x-axis. Okay. Four, um, okay we are going to split this. For B, when it's bigger than 1, that case, we have a couple things. Um, the limit as X goes to minus infinity of B to the X is 0, right? The limit as it goes to positive infinity, it goes to infinity, and it's increasing on the entire real line. Okay? Um, and the last one is for the other case. For 0 is less than b is less than 1. This limit as x goes to minus infinity. This is getting really big. The limit as x goes to positive infinity is 0 and it's decreasing. on minus infinity to infinity. In this case, this b greater than 1 is what we called exponential growth. And this one is called exponential decay. Okay? So you can use just these three points that I gave you in, in, as we're doing the examples to graph these, just knowing the basic shape of these functions. Okay, but this is kind of what exponential functions look like. Okay, so I just want to look at one last example of graphing something to make sure that you guys understand how we could apply these properties. So graph f of x is equal to to the x, right? This is an exponential function. So I'm not going to go through this process of making this huge list of numbers. I know three points that are valuable, okay? 0, 1, 1, 5, and negative 1, 1, fifth, okay? I'm going to put those on my graph just like that. And even there, if you know the basic shape, you should identify this as exponential growth. You can draw in the rest of this. And get actually a pretty good graph in about two seconds, right? Without doing a lot, just knowing the overall shape and these three points that kind of solidify this graph and set it in space, okay? I still have this horizontal asymptote, y equals 0, but that's it. Okay, let me know if you have questions.